This is going to be the next episode of God's Game of Thrones. And in this one, we're going to talk about when the real king sits on the throne. And the real king will sit on the throne in the millennium. The Bible talks about the millennium many, many times. Especially in Revelation chapter 20. And how anyone can deny that there is a future 1,000 year reign of the Lord Jesus Christ is beyond me. But let's look at it. What is the millennium? It is a 1,000 year period where Jesus Christ rules and reigns as a king on the earth. It's a time of perfect peace. Isaiah 9, 6 through 7 says, For unto us a child is born, unto us a son is given, and the government shall be upon his shoulder. And his name shall be called Wonderful, Counselor, the Mighty God, the Everlasting Father, the Prince of Peace, of the increase of his government and peace, there shall be no end. Even after the Millennial Kingdom, it just goes on out into eternity. Upon the throne of David and upon his kingdom to order it and to establish it with judgment and with justice from henceforth even forever, the zeal of the Lord of hosts will perform this. Now, Revelation 20, verses 2 through 7. If you want to turn there, I recommend you turn there to Revelation 20, verses 2 through 7. And if you deny that there is a 1,000 years of millennial reign of the Lord Jesus Christ, look at Revelation 20, 2 through 7. Let's read it. Well, starting in verse 1, we'll go ahead and start in verse 1. It says, And I saw an angel come down from heaven, having the key of the bottomless pit and a great chain in his hand. And he laid hold on the dragon, that old serpent, which is the devil, and Satan. Now watch this. And bound him a thousand years, and cast him into the bottomless pit, and shut him up, and set a seal upon him, that he should deceive the nations no more, till the thousand years should be fulfilled. And after that he must be loosed a little season. And I saw thrones. And they set upon them, and judgment was given unto them. And I saw the souls of them that were beheaded for the witness of Jesus, and for the word of God, and which had not worshipped the beast, neither his image, neither received his mark upon their foreheads or in their hands. And they lived and reigned with Christ a thousand years. But the rest of the dead lived not again until the thousand years were finished. This is the first resurrection. Blessed and holy is he that hath part in the first resurrection. On such the second death hath no power. But they shall be priests of God and of Christ. And shall reign with him a thousand years. Verse 7. And when the thousand years are expired, Satan shall be loosed out of his prison. So there you saw Revelation 20. Verses 2 through 7. Each verse talks about a thousand years. How can you deny that there is a future 1,000 years where Satan is bound in the bottomless pit for all the people who think we're already in the kingdom? Satan ain't bound in the bottomless pit. He's working overtime right now. So, the millennial kingdom is yet future. Jesus comes to set up that millennial kingdom Jesus Christ has to come before the millennial kingdom. We're not going to bring it in. He's got to bring it in. So what is the millennium? It's a 1,000 year reign of the Lord Jesus Christ. So when is the millennium? It's after the second coming of the Lord Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ has to come down from heaven through the clouds and touch the ground and bring in the kingdom himself. So the millennium is after the second coming. The future events, the order of future events goes like this. You got the rapture of the church, where we live out of here. You got the tribulation. Then you have the second coming. And then you have the millennium. And Revelation 19, 11 through 15 shows you when Jesus Christ comes down to reign as king in God's game of thrones. The real king's going to sit on the throne. Revelation 19, 11 through 15. And I saw heaven opened, and behold, a white horse. And he that sat upon him was called faithful and true, and in righteousness he doth, he doth judge and make war. 
His eyes were as a flame of fire, and on his head were many crowns. And he had a name written that no man knew but he himself, and he was clothed with a vesture dipped in blood, and his name is called the Word of God. And the armies which were in heaven followed him upon white horses, clothed in fine linen, white and clean, and out of his mouth goeth a sharp sword, that with it he should smite the nations. And he shall rule them with a rod of iron, and he treadeth the winepress of the fierceness and wrath of Almighty God. When is the millennium? After Jesus Christ comes down out of heaven to take over. He's kicking everybody off the throne, and he's going to sit on the throne. He's the real king. He's king of kings and lord of lords. So what is the millennium? It's a 1,000-year period in the future. When is it? After the second coming. Now, who won't be in the millennium? Well, we've, as we've already saw in Revelation 21 through 3, the devil will be chained in the bottomless pit. And in Zechariah 13 and verse 2, it says, And it shall come to pass in that day, saith the Lord of hosts, that I will cut off the names of the idols out of the land, and they shall no more be remembered. And, I, and also I will cause the prophets and the unclean spirit to pass out of the land. So no devil, no unclean spirit. All the sin that will be going on is because of the flesh. And it, this time will show you just how bad man's flesh actually is. Because at the end of the millennium, even though men have walked and talked with Jesus Christ for a thousand years, the devil will be loosed out of his prison and he will deceive uh, so many people that it will make up an army innumerable as the sand of the sea, which they will be defeated. But it goes to show you that even though the devil won't be around, for the 1,000 years. Unclean spirits won't be around for the 1,000 years. Man's flesh is so wicked that he still goes against the Lord Jesus Christ. But that's who won't be in the millennium, the devil and unclean spirits. And notice that in Zechariah 13, 2, it also says, He will cause the prophets and the unclean spirit to pass out of the land. There will be no need of, of people prophesying because... Uh, the Lord will be sitting on a throne. Everybody will see him. Everybody will know him. All shall know him from the least to the greatest. You won't have to go up to somebody and say, Do you know the Lord Jesus Christ? They're going to see him on the throne. They're going to know who he is. So that's who won't be in the millennium. Now, who will be in the millennium? You're going to have Jews inheriting the land promised to them. Look at Genesis Chapter 13 and verse 15. In Genesis 13 and verse 15, you're going to see Abraham. And God says to Abraham, For all the land which thou seest, to thee will I give it, and to thy seed forever. The Jews are finally going to get the land that's promised to them. Now look at Jeremiah chapter 30 and verse 3. Jeremiah 30 and verse 3, For lo, the days come, saith the Lord, that I will bring again the captivity of my people Israel and Judah, saith the Lord, and I will cause them to return to the land that I gave to their fathers, and they shall possess it. So this is the time when the Jews inherit the land promised to them. So that's who's going to be there. And then you also have church-age saints who suffered with Jesus Christ they're going to be reigning with him. A lot of people think that we, the church age saints, aren't going to be in the millennium. That this is just for the Jews. But it doesn't make any sense that, you know, we've waited all this time to be with the Lord. And then, you know, as soon as we get to be with him, we're going to be with him a few years. And then he's just going to be down here on earth in the millennium. And are we just going to be somewhere else? That doesn't make sense. We are part of the body of Christ. I mean... We make up the Lord's body. We're going to be where he's at. Now, 2 Timothy 2.12 shows us where we are going to be. It says, If we suffer, we shall also reign with him. If we deny him, he also will deny us. So church-age saints who suffer with the Lord during your life, you're going to reign with Jesus Christ on the earth in the millennium. And... Um, even the ones that don't suffer with them, they're still going into the millennium. So, who, who's in the millennium? The Jews inheriting the land promised to them? 
church age saints reigning with him. And tribulation saints who were martyred for Jesus Christ will be there. As it says in Revelation 20 and verse 4, those that didn't take the mark of the beast. It says, And I saw thrones, and they sat upon them, and judgment was given unto them. For I saw the souls of them that were beheaded for the witness of Jesus, and for the word of God, which had not worshipped the beast, neither his image, neither had received his mark upon their foreheads or in their hands. And they lived and reigned with Christ a thousand years. So the tribulation saints who were martyred for Jesus Christ will be there. The tribulation saints who survived the tribulation will go right on into the kingdom. You know, the... The people, the nations that were good to the Jew will enter into the millennial kingdom. And you can read about that in Matthew 25, 31 through 46. You have the judgment of the nations. You know, the Old Testament saints will be there. Because Jesus, because of what Jesus said to the disciples in Luke twenty two thirty, 30. He said that you may eat and drink at my table in my kingdom. And sit on thrones judging the twelve tribes of Israel. The disciples are going to be there, Old Testament saints. So where will this kingdom be? We've seen what is the king, millennial kingdom. What, what is it? It's a thousand years. When is it? It's after the second coming. We see who won't be there, the devil and the spirits. We see who will be there, the uh, Jews inheriting the promised land, the church age saints, the tribulation saints, the nations that were good to the Jew enter in. So where will it be? The Lord will reign from Jerusalem. In Isaiah 65, 18 and 19, it says, But be ye glad and rejoice forever in that which I create. For behold, I create Jerusalem a rejoicing, and her people a joy, and I will rejoice in Jerusalem, and joy in my people. And the voice of weeping shall be no more heard in her, nor the voice of crying. And all nations will come to worship him in Jerusalem. Zechariah 14, 17, And it shall be that whoso will not come up of all the families of the earth into Jerusalem to worship the King, the Lord of hosts, even upon them shall be no rain. R-A-I-N. If the other nations that came into the millennium don't come to worship before the Lord, then they don't get rain for their crops. Psalm 72, 6 through 9 says, He shall come down like rain upon the mown grass, as showers that water the earth. In his days shall the righteous flourish, not the wicked, like they are right now. An abundance of peace so long as the moon endureth. He shall have dominion also from the sea to sea, and from the river unto the ends of the earth. They that dwell in the wilderness shall bow before him, and his enemies shall lick the dust. They're not going to get no rain. They're going to be licking the dust. His enemies are. And it's going to be the righteous who flourish. Look around. We're not in the millennial kingdom. There's wicked men flourishing today. There's wicked men in great power. We're not in the millennial kingdom. So, that's where the kingdom will be. Jesus Christ is going to reign from Jerusalem. Now, what will the kingdom be like? It will be like what you see in these fairy tale movies they want you to make you think this is just nothing but a fairy tale but in the millennial kingdom you're going to be walking around and you're going to see church age saints which will be you if you're saved in glorified bodies that can do anything really uh, run faster than the flash uh, fly like superman stronger than the hulk that can teleport can jump really high, can do anything in a glorious, glorified body. Uh, that's what people, there's going to be people in natural bodies walking around as well, and they're going to see people in these glorified bodies. You're going to see Old Testament saints that you've read about your entire life walking around and talking with each other. It's all going to go, going to go back to pre-flood ages. If you want, look at Isaiah 65 and verse 20. It goes back to pre-flood ages. Remember, when you're reading the book of Genesis, how people lived to be uh, so many years old, you know, nine, uh, Methuselah, 969 years old. It says in Isaiah 65, 20, there shall be no more thence an infant of days, nor an old man that hath 
not filled his days. For the child shall die a hundred years old, but the sinner being a hundred years old shall be accursed. So the child shall die a hundred years old. If a 100-year-old dies, they'll be like, man, he was young in the millennial kingdom. People in natural bodies will still be having children who will have their own free will to choose or reject Jesus Christ. A lot of people think, well, you know, when the millennium hits, people aren't having children anymore. No, they continue to have children. God wants people to have children. He doesn't want anybody to abort their children. He doesn't want any population control. Jesus Christ wants his kingdom to be never-ending. He wants it to get bigger and bigger and bigger. Uh, people will still be building houses and planting gardens. Look at Isaiah 65, 21. And they shall build houses and inhabit them, and they shall plant vineyards and eat the fruit of them. And that's what you have. People in natural bodies still having children still building houses. They'll be working with their hands. There's going to be perfect weather, perfect food, easy, enjoyable work. No more dreading to get up in the morning. The Lord will be our teacher, according to Micah 4.2, which says, And many nations shall come and say, Come, and let us go up to the mountain of the Lord and to the house of the God of Jacob. And he will teach us of his ways, and we will walk in his paths, for the law shall go forth of Zion and the word of the Lord from Jerusalem. So you're going to hear Jesus do verse by verse Bible studies. He's going to break down each book of the Bible. He's going to teach you of his ways. The Lord's going to be our teacher. The animals will have the curse lifted. Look at Isaiah 11, 6 through 8. In Isaiah 11, 6 through 8, Isaiah 11, 6 through 8 says, The wolf also shall dwell with the lamb, and the leopard shall lie down with the kid, and the calf, and the young lion, and the fatling together, and a little child shall lead them. And the cow and the bear shall feed. Their young ones shall lie down together, and the lion shall eat straw like the ox, and the sucking child shall play on the hole of the asp, and the winged child shall put his hand on the cockatrice den. They shall not hurt nor destroy in all my holy mountain, for the earth shall be full of the knowledge of the Lord as the waters cover the sea. And in that day there shall be a root of Jesse, which shall stand for an instant of the people. To, uh, to it shall the Gentiles seek, and his rest shall be glorious. And it shall come to pass in that day that the Lord shall set his hand again the second time to recover the remnant of his people which shall be left from Assyria and from Egypt and from Pathros and from Cush and from Elam and from Shinar and from Hamath and from the islands of the sea. You're going to have the animals with the curse lifted. You're not going to have, I mean, you could see a lion and not be afraid, a tiger, a bear, a snake and not be afraid. There's going to be no fear or anxiety in this kingdom. In Zephaniah chapter 3, verse 13, The remnant of Israel shall not do iniquity nor speak lies, neither shall a deceitful tongue be found in their mouth, for they shall feed and lie down, and none shall make them afraid. You ain't got to worry about a bunch of idiots taking over and passing a bunch of stupid laws, uh, trying to take away your rights trying to do perverted, crazy things. There's going to be no fear or anxiety. And it will it'll go back to all will be on one language again. Zephaniah 3, 9. For then will I turn to the people a pure language, that they may all call upon the name of the Lord to serve him with one consent. It'll go back to one language. And what you're going to have... Uh, in this millennial kingdom, as a deterrent to crime, is a lake of fire on earth. It will be a deterrent to crime. People, When people come to worship the Lord in Jerusalem, they're going to go and see. They're gonna, when, they, when they come up to worship the Lord in Jerusalem, they're going to see people, the carcasses of the men that have transgressed against him, 
burning and a lake of fire. In Isaiah 66, 23 through 24, it says, And it shall come to pass that from one new moon to another, and from one Sabbath to another, shall all flesh come to worship before me, saith the Lord, and they shall go forth, and look upon the carcasses of the men that have transgressed against me. For their worms shall not die, neither shall their fire be quenched, and they shall be an abhorring unto all flesh. That is your millennial kingdom. That is the great events of that 1,000 year time period. So this has been God's Game of Thrones. And you've just seen when the real king gets on the throne.